Today, Nonprofit Spotlight is at La Casa de Maria Retreat Center. We'll be talking with Director Stephanie Glatt and Associate Director Julia Spoon Tuomi. Let's start our spotlight. Well, thank you, Stephanie, so much for talking with us today. Can you start out by telling us the mission of La Casa de Maria? We have kind of a long mission, but um, the best way that I like to describe it is it's a place where people can come to reconnect with their deepest, best selves. And having done that, when they go back to their lives, they'll work for a better world, a more peaceful and just earth and more healthful environment. Can you give us a brief history of this wonderful place? It has a great history. Well, starting with these oak trees, we have an oak tree specialist who comes here and the first time he saw these, he said, oh, these were all trimmed by the Chumash people, that they were trimmed down in order to harvest the acorns. Fascinating. So we know there was that, and then it was a way station during the time of the Franciscan missions when they were working their way up the coast. Eventually, it became part of the San Ysidro Ranch, actually. And after that, it was purchased by a private um, owner. He let it go, and a community of religious women purchased it as a novitiate. So it was a novitiate for a number of years. Then, in um, 1955, the community built the retreat center in order to extend their ministry and um, serve people in that way. In um, 1970, the community became an ecumenical community of men and women, and the retreat house became ecumenical, open to all Christian faiths. And not long after that, it um, started welcoming people of non-Christian faiths and no faiths at all, and by the 90s, it was an interfaith center. Well, what is the size of the retreat center, and how many people can you accommodate at one time? Um, our conditional use permit allows us to have 150 at one time. We have slightly more beds than that, but we stick to the 150. We have um, 42 retreat rooms that we each with a private bath, and two dormitories, one that sleeps 40 and one that sleeps 10. And then there's also the Center for Spiritual Renewal, where people make private retreats that can house about 17. Well, thank you, Stephanie, for talking with us today. Thank you, I've enjoyed it. I've learned a lot, and I know our viewers have as well. And next Great. we'll be talking with Juliet. Excellent. Well, thank you, Juliet, for joining us today. It's nice to be with you. Can you start off by telling us about this very special area we're sitting in? Yes, this is one of my favorite places on the property. This is our Peace Garden, our inter, one of the international gardens for peace, and it's named after a young Japanese woman, Sadako, who is the person around the thousand paper cranes, the legend that if you folded a thousand paper cranes, you would be healed. And she was a victim of radiation sickness after the Hiroshima bombing. Can you just tell us about how the retreat center serves our local community here in Santa Barbara? Yes, there are three ways that our retreat center serves the community. One is by serving nonprofits and groups who want to hold a program at our place, and we call those conferences. Another is we put on programs that we design and invite leaders for, and then individuals come to that. And then the third way is in the beautiful home behind us, the Center for Spiritual Renewal, where individuals and couples can come on private retreat. Describe for our viewers the renewal and preservation work that's going on at the retreat center in the actual physical sense. Sure, sure. Um, the property, um, the, the buildings, the retreat center itself is 55 years old and so a lot of our buildings are aging and need upgrading and so we're beginning with our sleeping rooms, um, upgrading the bathrooms and the mattresses and all of that and every opportunity we're taking to green the property so we've just added some wonderful solar panels onto that that will augment electricity and feedback in into the grid we recently redid our dining room and again there took every opportunity to green that 
um, that project. We're also working on our meeting rooms. We have about 10 different meeting rooms, some large enough to hold 150 people at a time and others that are smaller for groups of a dozen to 20. And so as technology is shifting and audiovisual equipment and all of that is changing, we're trying to upgrade so that we can keep abreast with the needs of the groups who use us. And how can interested parties find out more about the Retreat Center? Well, you can go on our website, mm -hmm. you can call us on the phone, um, and... Uh, just make a reservation? Just make a reservation. We have wonderful conference coordinators that can lead you through the steps that you would need to do. And then also for individuals to go to our website, see if there's, browse the website, see if there's a program that you're interested in attending, and get on our mailing list and come. Great. Well, thank you so much, Juliet, for talking with us. And next, we'll be speaking with Michelle, who is up at the, uh, the private retreat center. Right, the Center for Spiritual Renewal. We'll go on up there. Great. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Michelle, for joining us today. It's a pleasure to have you. Can you tell us about this part of La Casa de Maria? Yes. This is the Center for Spiritual Renewal, and we offer retreats for individuals and couples, non-directed retreats, um, for people of all faiths. And this is an actual um, old novitiate house that was uh, used as a training center for nuns who were young women who were becoming nuns. Prior to that, it was a manor house that was belong that belonged to a family. It was built around the late 1920s. It was. Uh, done by the architect Mary Osborne Craig. So we can accommodate about 15 uh, retreatants at any one time in the house. And we have a communal meal at the dinner, at dinner time and we have uh, centering prayer several times a day and we also have uh, communal prayer after dinner. So people come here to get away from uh, the stress of their daily lives and to um, enjoy the silence and the solitude and the serenity and the obvious beauty of this place. Well, Juliet told us about the ways our viewers can get in contact with the Retreat Center. Would that information be the same if somebody were interested in coming to this location? Yes, we have a website that is, um, we've just recently redone and we have a phone number and email address so we would be, you would be able to get in touch with us and come on, uh, people who would be interested would be able to come on individual retreats. Perfect. Thank you so much for talking with us today and also thank you to Michelle and Juliet for sharing all of the information with regards to La Casa de Maria Retreat Center. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. You're watching Nonprofit Spotlight. If you'd like your nonprofit featured in a future Nonprofit Spotlight, contact us at the information on your screen.